Hello, and welcome to the master bedroom. Now, last time I mentioned that I'm getting a new TV in the living room. And you might wonder, well, what's happening to the TV in the living room? It's coming here. One problem, there's no mount here. Hence this video, I'm gonna show you how to install an Echo Gear, let's hang, that's their motto. Full motion articulating TV wall mount. So here, here's what it comes with. It comes with all sorts of things and the brackets to go on the back of the thing. And uh, you, you, well, you'll see, we'll, we'll use all these pieces. This is the actual wall mount itself. That's the part we're about to do. I also have my lovely level here. Step one is to find the studs. The mount wants either 16 or 24. But look, I have the magic stud finder. Couldn't find a pencil, but I found a little red pen and it's all gonna be behind the TV. No one's ever gonna see it anyway, so who cares what I do to the wall, right? Yeah, this is the one I said should be here. So according to this, the center of this stud is right here. And yeah, that's right where I thought it would be. And the other one's right here. Those lines are 15 and a quarter inches apart. This is where I need to poke through while we're here. I also got a flat screen TV in wall cover and power kit from made by Commercial Electric. And as you can see in the picture, it's gonna go down in the wall and then there's a tube that's gonna run the wires up to the TV and then it'll plug in and the power, it'll bring the power up. It's a really great thing. We'll be installing this after we put up the uh, thing. But the reason I bring it up is because the, th those two holes need to be five feet apart. The bottom one's going to be a few inches off the ground above down there. The other end of the hole needs to be about right there, which means I'm probably going to want to mount this. Hey, here's a fun thing about all the instructions for every one of these mounts I've looked at. They never talk about how far off the floor you want to put the mount. They, always, they say, well, the TV needs to be this far, but you don't know where the TV is going to be when it's on the mount. So I, that's, what do I do? Well, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go measure how far the other TV, where the other mount is on this TV that's coming in here and see how far it is off the ground. And I'll be right back. So the other mount is about 52 inches off of the floor, which would put it about here. Okay, clearly there's a stud behind there. Clearly there's a stud behind there. No stud. That's past the edge. Also past the edge. Now let's try this guy. So that's no, no, no. Now let's see how far apart they are. <laughs> okay, from center to center doesn't look to be, so it's close to 16 inches. So whoever was doing this, eh. <laughs> well, you know, construction. My favorite four foot long level. <laughs> You just can't be level enough. According to the level, this is level. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, 316 would be 630 seconds. And I said a 730 seconds, so this is one step smaller than I need, which means it will be fine. Okay. In this fun. This is my friend Brian. Because it says in the instructions, do not try to do this alone. And considering how heavy this thing is, I'm thinking that was good advice because Brian's holding it up all right. You still got it lined up over there? Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, we're not going to tighten it all the way and we're just going to get... Well, actually, that's probably in, uh, far enough to hold now, but we'll, we'll go a little more. That TV in the other room, when the professionals put that bracket up to hold this, this thing like this on in there, the TV they were mounting weighed like 200 pounds. Guess what? It fell off the wall, ripped right out of the roof. So we, when, we when we take that off, you'll see that it actually goes into three studs. <laughs> they, had, they had a thing welded onto it. Do not use a power tool for this because you'll run it in so far and it'll keep turning and it'll strip inside the stud and then it'll just pull right out. Kind of like what happened to my guys in the other room. From Amazon, this one was 120 or 129. Oh, and apparently they're not trying to sell you the most expensive thing they got because it says go on our website and tell us what TV you have and we'll tell you what bracket to buy. And so I went on their website and their website said to buy the one smaller than this, which is only like $80. But it says it'll handle TVs up to 75 inches. And it says, it says don't worry about that. 
it'll work for your TV. I'm yeah. going, ah, yeah. there we go. So I got all four lag bolts stuck all the way in and everything is going great. And then I pulled it out. Well, when you pull it out, there are these arrows cut into the metal here that when they're up against here, you can't really see because they're black on black. But when you pull them out, you can look through them and see the, the, the beige wall behind it and realize that these arrows are pointing that way. So I have installed this upside down. Now I called Echo Gear. They have a, a, a number you can call if you, if you need assistance. And I said, well, is it dangerous? And they said, no, because 90% of the load is being carried by these four lag bolts, which I put in at considerable effort and our elbow grease. Plus, and this is, I had already figured this out on my own, but they told me on the phone, if I take these bolts out, I can't reuse those holes because they won't be, they won't be strong because they were, so I I'm gonna, I would have to move it up or down and re-drill and then put the four lag bolts back in. Oh, and in the meanwhile, my friend Brian went home. <laughs> So I'd have to call Brian and get him to drive all the way back over here to hold it up while I did that. The upshot is the official recommendation is turn it around, turn it over and do it again. But they agree with me that it's unlikely that it will cause any kind of problem. There is one issue that, that will be, and if you care about this, the tilt. What you're supposed to have is a 15 degree down or five degree up tilt. You, you see, I have a 15 degree up tilt and a five degree down tilt. Now, I'm not, I'm, as you can see where I'm mounting this, it's not that high on the wall. My bed is over there behind the camera and I will, whenever I'm watching this TV, I'm probably gonna be, I'll be in bed. So I don't really need it tilted. If it was up higher, maybe tilted down, but it's not. And five degrees is probably just about right because I'm, I'm standing here looking from, from the center a five degree down tilt is aimed right at pretty much where my head would be on the bed. This thing comes out almost two full feet from the wall. See, I'm standing completely behind it. Plus you now have, look at the swivel. Not that anyone's ever gonna be watching from the hall outside of my bedroom. Although technique, nah, if, if, I, if I put it this way, I can look into the master bathroom and if I was sitting on the toilet and like leaned forward and turned to the side, I might could see the screen from here. But yeah, so I don't, I don't need all this in this room. This is really a, this is a living room mount, not a bedroom wall mount, but it's a big TV and I wanted to make sure it had a good mount. So that's what we're going with. Now we're not, we're not quite done. So it says if you want to level this, you need to undo, there's a hex key comes with, and you're supposed to unloosen these two screws on the back here at the bottom. But of course, since I put it upside down, they're at the top. Okay, see now it's all loosey goosey. Okay. Okay. So now I've adjusted those screws. So it's pretty much dead level. This is level. This still looks slightly off again. I can mess with it more later. One other thing you need to do, in all of this, I have not touched this bag of hardware. These are screws for attaching these brackets to the back of the TV. And see, and then once that's done, you'll hang the TV here. By the way, this will unscrew. You're not gonna get to see any of this because I'm gonna be having professionals do this part tomorrow. But you'll uns you unscrew this and open this up and then you hang the TV. Then you close this back up, put that screw back in and then it's basically screwed to the bottom here. So it basically can't fall off. I mean, with all the weight hanging this way, it's not gonna fall off. But when you put the screw, the wrap that thing around and tighten it back down. But anyway, but this, these are the hardware because TVs have different things. So here we have spacers five millimeters, two and a half millimeters, M6 by 12, M6 by 20, 
M6 by 35, M8 by 16, M8 by 25, M8 by 35, M8 by 50, uh, some washers, and then some 22 millimeter spacers. Basically, if the back of your TV is curved, you may have to put use different kinds of space. For, they, they supply these for, for, for multiple brands of TV and the spacers let you deal with it. So basically almost anything you can run into, they've given you the uh, appropriate tools for. I'm just gonna get these screwed on right now and then I'm done. So all I gotta do is screw these little, uh... okay, so you just screw these on here and then we're done with this part. Like I said, the, uh, the professionals tomorrow will be dealing with the putting the brackets onto the back. Well, first they have to take the brackets off of the back of the TV for the, for the mount in the other room and move those brackets to the new TV. Then they have to come in here and put these brackets onto the old, onto the old TV, which I'm sure they're just going to be thrilled to be doing because, you know, you know, when you install TVs around Christmas time, <laughs> you really don't want to spend a lot of extra time at people's houses, but they're going to have to spend a little extra time here. Don't worry, I will probably reward them with cash money. So the end caps are on. By the way, these really serve very little purpose other than A, they're pretty, but B, they fix it so when you have your TV hanging on here, uh, it won't, it can't accidentally, well, especially while you're hanging it, it won't slide off the end. And then again, you unscrew this and wrap it around and then you're, up, you're good. That's it for the, for the mount. But we're not done because I want to, I want the wires to run through the walls. But what we have here, this is going to be at the top. This is one end. Then, and the reason I like this one, this uh, commercial electric, is because it has these things that you can, that, that will go in the wall. So the wires won't just be running exposed through your wall. And see here are the little end plate, end co covers. Here's the power cord that's actually going to run. You, actually, I think that's the cord to go to the wall. We have a, 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 a saw blade that you attach to your drill. So, so you can you cut the hole in the drywall with, with your drill. And then it's perfectly round. And then when you put these covers on, they have little things that will flip out to hold them in place. Here's half of one end. And again, because it's round, see, they can, they, this keeps the power separate from your wires. And see, here are the little things they're gonna, gonna flip out and lock in when you turn the screws. It even comes with the fish, what do they call it, fish tape. Although, as you can see, it's plastic and clearly not tape of all, any kind. But for pulling the wires through the wall. This kit comes with basically everything you need, including rubber bands you put your loose wires, like your HDMI cables and et cetera, through here, but the power wire goes on the outside and you rubber band it together. Phase two of this project is running the wires through the wall, which I can do all before the TV gets here. So now we have the, the hole saw. So we're gonna put that little bracket there. And then we're gonna put this in, and this only goes in one way which locks into that bracket. And then we have this nut that screws on like so. And now we have our hole saw, which we can attach to our drill, like so. We go to town on our marked hole. Voila. Yeah, that was how it was supposed to work. There we go. Now we have our two holes. So the instructions say to put this in and then we're and then we're gonna run this down through here so it gets to the bottom. But then in a later step they have you run all the cables through this tube. And I'm thinking, since I'm running it, why don't I do that now? 
and then just get it all out of the way so I don't have to snake these cables through here one by one. So that's what I'm going to do. There is my Ethernet. There is HDMI 1. Okay, now I've got two HDMIs through there. There we go. Now the other thing I'm supposed to do, use the included rubber bands. So now I have this. I'm going to feed this down through here. I want the white wire to end up up here. Now, I'm going to come down here. So here's that power wire. Now what I'm supposed to do down here is attach this. So now for the little bit of complication here at the end, we have to pry this apart there so we can take this top off. And then we're going to take this plug and go in there like that. There we go. Snap that back in there. And that's your bottom half. Put this back up through here. There we go. Presto. Now, as I tighten these screws, it flips up little, little arms to hold it in. Now see, you run your, your non-power cables, and then that snaps on there like so. So now see, I can plug this in here like so, and then this will plug in over there into the uninterruptible power supply. But the good news for me is that the connections on my TV, on that TV, are at this end. Now I just need to tidy up up top like I tidied up down below. Actually, if you've been paying attention, I need to tidy up better up top than I did down below. It's a, li a little unsightly, but here's the good news. No one will ever see this because this is behind the TV. Well, if I was doing this for a living, they'd probably fire me. I'm having the new TV professionally installed in the other room. Well, they, they have to take that one down and take the brackets off the back to put it on the new TV. And I'm hoping to give them a little money to carry it in here and put these and help me or, or let me or help me put these new brackets on and hang the old TV up here. The mounts upside down. The covers are crooked and not really attached that well. The, the uh, conduit thing that runs down is not attached at the bottom because I couldn't get that to happen. But all things considered, I'm calling this a success. As you can clearly see, the Geek Squad has come and gone. And next week's video, which will be about the TV in the other room, I will talk about what a great crew the Geek Squad sent over. But I'll tell you, that for this TV, I couldn't have asked for any more. I really just wanted them to carry it in here. I would put the brackets on and then have them help me hang it on the mount. Oh, no, 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 no. They had to do it all. They put the brackets on, they hung it up, they attacked, remember you had to fold the thing down and they did that. They plugged all the wires in. They did the whole, like they did it like it was a full install, even though it was not. It was just an incidental thing to their, to their the thing they were installing. And when I tried to give them money for doing the extra work, they refused it several times. Now I can be very persistent, but they wouldn't take it. So I was really, really impressed with their work ethic, with how hard, I mean, they really worked hard. There was some, pro well, I'll tell you about what, what went on in the other room next week in, the, in next week's video when I'm, where we're going over the new TV. Now, one thing, one, some of you may be thinking, well, why, why did I buy a new TV? And I may have mentioned this, but I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there's a little dark stripe here. This is an edge lit LCD, which is the cheapest, lousiest backlighting for, for an LCD, which is edge lit. You want, you want like multiple dip, you know, dimming zones. It's so, it's micro, you know, they're going to 2,400, 25,000. This has two. There's one along the top, one along the bottom. Those are, those are, those are their zones. I mean, there's zones. 
But anyway, so these these LEDs are, are dying or are out. I don't know. It's But there's a dark stripe where it doesn't get much backlight. Now, it's just these. Up here, you can see it, it looks all right. I, and again, I don't know if this shows up. But it's a dark stripe that runs up the picture. Now, to watch every day, it was... It, it, I hated it. It was horrible. To watch once a year when I'm sick in bed and can't get out, because I think I mentioned this, this TV in this room has been on more in the last 24 hours than it will be in the next two years. Assuming I don't get really, really sick. The last time I watched this, the TV in this room for more than a minute, usually it's to check to see if the cable's out. When the other TV doesn't work, I come in here to make sure you know, it's at the cable. But the only other time is, like I said, when I'm really sick in bed. And I haven't been sick in bed since COVID. So in, in, in the summer of 2020, I watched the TV in this room for like a week because I was too sick to get out of bed. And I haven't watched it as much since then. Again, again, except to make sure that, you know, the, the cable's working. So anyway, so this TV is going to be fine in here. It's not going to get much use. It should last for years. Whereas if I kept using it with these lights burning out, Oh, and earlier there was some flickering up of the, of the backlight up at the top. So they're slowly dying. But again, it, a slow death will be fine. It should take years with the amount of effort it's going to get here. Anyway, you don't care about any of that. I do, because it's my TV. But, oh, and as you can see, I mean, you know, the whole thing, that it's got the, still got the swivel. I don't know if you probably can't tell from this angle... But it does have the five degree down tilt that I you remember it's supposed to be 15. <laughs> it has the five degree up tilt, which I am using as down tilt because I installed it upside down. But anyway, it's, it, it looks great. I'm very happy. Oh, here's a, here's a, here's a tip. I don't know. I, earlier in the video, I said I, I ran coax through the wall because I was thinking I'd use the antenna in this. Eh, hey, well, Comcast cable scrambles all the channels. You cannot get any cables. So I'm probably going to take the coax that comes out of the bottom and get some sort of antenna so that if the cable does go out, I can still watch TV in here. So, anyway. So don't run coax through your walls if you have Comcast or any other probably big cable. Make sure, check, because you're, you're, it's probably scrambled and having a coax going into your TV will not give you any channels. So, that's it for the, the mount and the, and the wall mount and, and the wires through the wall. And this, did nothing, again, this is an old TV, and I showed you why. Anyway, that's it for this week. Come back next week, and I'll show off my new LG C1 83-inch OLED that is now hanging on the wall in the other room. Now, that is three inches smaller than this, and you'd think you wouldn't be able to tell. But trust me, you can tell. I can tell. It's slightly, it's smaller. And of course, since you don't have it to compare, you can't see, well, it's only three inches. Yeah, three. It's three inches. <laughs> Diagonal, shorter. But it, it really makes it look smaller. Anyway, come back next week. We'll finish it all up. You'll see the new TV. Bye-bye.